What is up, Earth's mightiest subscribers? It's Ernie, Blurred Without Fear. Welcome back to the channel. All right, so today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Marvel Comics character and X-Man, Maggot. Of course, we're gonna be doing this as a reward for hitting our $300 milestone for this year's St. Jude Play Live charity run. So as a thank you for hitting that milestone, that is why we are tackling Maggot today. That's right, we're gonna talk about Maggot, we're gonna break him down, tell you everything you need to know about him, to have an intelligent conversation about him, and we're gonna talk about all that and more right now. But first, let's hit that intro. Word the wise, grass only greener when it's fertilized. Gave them truth in these songs, they prefer the lies. That's any beautiful adrift in her purple lies. You can't see me, you see me. Wondering how I reach more evolutions than Evie and make it look easy. Maggot, human name, Jafeth first appeared in Uncanny X-Men number 345 in 1997 and was created by Scott Lobdell, Ben Rabe, Joe Moderera, and Melvin Ruby. Jafeth was born and raised in South Africa where he lived with his five other siblings. He always had health problems as a kid and suffered from chronic stomach pains to the point that doctors believed he had cancer. His family was poor and the treatments needed to save his life would cripple his family financially. After overhearing his mother praying that the cancer take him swiftly, he ran away from home at the age of 12 and tried to commit suicide to spare his family the burden of not only draining themselves financially, but also sparing them watching him die. He wandered into the Kalahari Desert, hoping to die there, but little to his knowledge, his younger brother had stowed away with him in their parents' jeep that Jafeth had used to get away. They were eventually saved by Magneto, who would discover that the reason Jafeth's stomach caused him such incredible pain is because he had no stomach at all. What he had were two metal slug-like creatures living in his body and acting as his digestive system. Magneto would help him extract these slugs from his body to relieve him of the chronic pain that they caused him. These two metal slug creatures, named Eni and Meanie, are maggots' digestive system. They can eat through any material they come into contact with, whether it be wood, steel, anything. And whatever they consume, they give to Japheth when they return to his body and it becomes nourishment for him. The energy he receives from this nourishment grants him heightened senses as well as increased physical strength and durability. A side effect of this change is that his skin often turns the color blue, sometimes blue-black. As a caveat to no longer having a normal digestive system, Maggot cannot eat normal food, and if he were to ever lose his slugs, he would die. This originally caused Maggot intense pain due to the nature of how the slugs had to burrow in and out of his body as they fed, and Eni and Meany fed at least five times a day. The two slugs, Eni and Meany, seemed to be incredibly durable and possibly nigh indestructible, with one having eaten a bomb removed from Cyclops' chest, and the only reaction it had after it exploded inside of its body was a fiery burp. They, for all intents and purposes, are considered to be sentient creatures. They are incredibly intelligent and can even act of their own accord, whether Maggot wants them to or not. Jafeth seems to communicate with them on some telepathic level. That said, he has been known in the past to have some modicum of psychometry allowing him to see past events unfold when focusing on his immediate surroundings. Though Magneto helped Jafeth discover his mutant abilities and would later help him return to his home safe and sound, life was not that simple for him after that. In the time he was gone, his father was murdered by a rebel militia, and this is how Magneto realized he could never be like Magneto. Magnus killed the men responsible for his father's death, but it permanently scarred Japheth to the point that he renounced Magneto and promised he would never join his cause. He would eventually break that promise, if only to better master his abilities, but in his search for Magnus, only found Psylocke and Angel instead, and as superheroes are wont to do, they fought each other without understanding why. This would eventually get him to Magneto, though not the Magneto he was looking for. He, alongside Angel and Psylocke, would be teleported to Antarctica for the trial of Gambit, where he would meet the Magneto clone, Joseph. 
Maggot often kept the true nature of his abilities from the rest of the X-Men after he joined, which made him incredibly suspicious to the rest of the team. He feared they would shun him if he revealed how his eating habits actually worked. This would be played up even more once humans in the area near the X-Mansion mysteriously died due to being nearly completely eaten alive. This made everyone suspect Maggot, but this was in fact another character by the name of Pilgrim the leader of the Rutai demons that were responsible for the murders. Wolverine would be the one to discover the real truth regarding Maggot's innocence when the demons tried to eat him and failed. He would be the first person Maggot trusted enough to reveal the true nature of his powers, including his true age, and they would even become fast friends. There was originally a connection tease between the Rutai and Pilgrim in regards to Maggot, but this was never fully explored. Pilgrim was seemingly meant to be another big bad for the X-Men to fight on a regular basis and a way to further explore Maggot's character. But a lack of interest in Maggot at the time from the X-Men readership may have killed this early on, seeing as according to Marvel, Maggot was the Quotey Fingers least popular X-Men character at the time. Maggot would later leave the X-Men to join Generation X at the recommendation of Beast to help him better understand and control his abilities. But his time there wouldn't last due to a big game hunter named Slaughter attacking the school seeking to hunt and kill Maggot's slugs. He would be unsuccessful in this attempt, but this didn't stop Maggot from leaving the team permanently to track down this hunter, and it wouldn't be until the death and funeral of Joseph that we would see Maggot again. He would later turn up again when Weapon X was kidnapping mutants and taking them to Project Neverland, where Maggot was ultimately executed. Before dying, he gave his two slugs to two of the children at the the Camp Neverland, but plenty of them would wind up disappearing thanks to Dr. Windsor, who was actually Mr. Sinister in disguise. Later on, during the Necrotia arc, Maggot would be revived by Selene, using a combination of dark magics and the Transmode virus to be a part of her army that she used to invade Utopia. Afterwards, Maggot's appearances became far more sporadic and incredibly small in nature. We know he was present the day Cyclops gave his speech in Washington, D.C. about the peaceful mutant revolution and he was present at the mindfulness of mutant appearances support group created by domino and nightcrawler also someone looking a lot like him also seemed to be at kid omega's 17th birthday party though some believe this to be a cosplayer but the bouncers at the hellfire club seemed to think it was the genuine article because by their own estimation who in their right mind would want to look like maggot on purpose Maggot would also appear in the X-Men Disassembled story arc to aid Jean Grey in the battle against Nate Grey, who had at that time possessed Legion and tried to distort reality to his desires. He would also be among the many mutants who were transported to Nate Grey's alternate reality, the Age of X-Man, where he worked alongside Transonic, Anoli, Scripture, and Match, who were all working for Ansaba Nur, or as he's also known, Apocalypse, all in an effort to bring an end to Nate Gray's manipulations. Since House of X, Maggot has appeared sparsely and been mentioned by name on a couple of occasions. In one particular instance of note, he can be seen in 2020's X-Force number 9 in the Big Green Lagoon splash page where he's locking lips with Monet St. Croix while she's in her penance form. And he's also very recently appeared in Children of the Atom number 1 greeting the new Quotey Fingers mutant hopefuls Cyclops Lass, Gimmick, Cherub, Daycrawler, and Marvel Guy. Though Maggot would be created as a South African native, co-creator Scott Lobdell originally intended for Maggot to be Australian. Speaking of Maggot's heritage, Joe Kelly used an actual Afrikaans lexicon to make Maggot's speech and slang a bit more authentic. Maggot has a weird relationship with dying, not just on Earth 616, but also in alternate realities. In the Ultimate Marvel Universe, Maggot is killed as a teenager by Mr. Sinister, and in the Age of X story arc, he's also killed off by the Avenger Iron Man. Maggot has no media appearances to speak of, but as I am always want to do, I like to pick an actor who I think can play this character on the big or small screen, and for me, for my money, 
I would pick actor Kofi Siraboe. Some of you may know from the TV series Queen Sugar and the TV series Awkward, and others may recognize him from the movie Girls Trip. Also, as I am wont to do, I like to offer up a little bit of recommended reading. Now, of course, Maggot has only appeared in a very scant few of comics, though I would recommend you pick up a few of these Uncanny X-Men Volume 1 titles, issues number 345, 347, 349, 350, and 352 through 355. I would also recommend you check out X-Men Volume 2, issues number 70 through 79, and of course check out Generation X Volume 1, number 48 and 49. After that, his appearance has become so sporadic that it's difficult for me to even recommend any specific titles beyond that point. But that said, Maggot is a really cool character that I feel like didn't get the flowers he deserved when he originally came out. I even remember as a kid not really finding him incredibly interesting, and I remember initially seeing him and thinking he was so weird that I was so anxious to see what he would actually be like when he was finally revealed. I became quite fond of him as a character on the X-Men, and I will admit that I have noticed over the years, especially as I've gotten older, I notice that so many people that didn't really seem to care for him back in the day seem to actually think more favorably of him now, or at the very least, I have met more people who like him now versus when he originally debuted. But it seems like he's getting mentioned and name dropped a little more since House of X, at least, you know, in the last few months. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, Hulk smash that like button and make sure to share this video all over the internet with all your friends so they can know how you leveled up your comic book big brain in regards to the X-Men character, Maggot. On your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button and let me know what you think about the Marvel Comics X-Men character, Maggot. Have you always known about him or are you today years old finding out about him? Keep it plus ultra and sound off in the comments.